Hey guys, in this episode, we're gonna take a whole bunch of pieces and build ourselves a new fender. And then while we're at it, build ourselves another new fender. Check it out. So we've got our Dakota Fender Flare pretty much ready to go. What I don't know is exactly where it's going to sit. I've kind of figured it out on the other side a little bit, but Really, when I do one, that'll really speak to the other, so they match. Basically, though, I'm thinking something like this. Somewhere in there-ish is about where I'm thinking it will go. I want to bring the wheel arch down a number of inches. You can see how high it is. So I want the wheel arch to come down a number of inches. And then I also need the wheel arch to recenter over the wheel here. You can see down here at the very bottom, it probably won't be all that significant. This is a narrower arch anyway, so all I have to do is balance up the front and rear in some fashion to be able to get this where I want it. Now, it's going to take quite a bit to get this figured out and fitted. But the very first step has to be the removal of this arch. Now there's every possibility that even with all of this up front, there's a gap here. But I'm actually going to make that even wider. Because honestly, I figure if I've got to cut this all off, I may as well cut it off in some kind of fashion to where it's usable as a repair panel for someone else. So I'll cut this off, maybe at like, you know, two inches all the way, and then all the way down here. I'll just cut all of that off uh, of both sides and sell these as patch panels for someone else who isn't doing quite what I'm doing but wants the factory style arch back. So, I think that's my first step. I'm just going to go through and mark out two inches all the way around and cut that off. So right there is the more or less the height to match the rear completely, which has been my intention. You know, that's more or less the original, so... We're talking about five and a half inches lower. So much like when I fit the rears, fitting these front fenders is more art than science, honestly. It's just trying to see what looks good, what works, what I like. I am going to have to spend quite a bit longer just looking at this, maybe fudging it around just a bit here and a bit there. I think this is close, but I'm not sure it's exact. However, I think I did solve one thing. <clears throat> this front corner. So this thing is the top front of the Dakota fender that I cut these fender flares out of. This is kind of where the side marker light is, but flipped over to the other side and turned around, I think it does an excellent job forming the filler panel for here.
So I think that gives that a nice finished look up there. So that'll give me some nice shape. Gives a bit of a contour and the bumper comes around with a slight contour as well. So I think all of that will actually flow really nicely to finish everything off. And at an angle like that, it also comes down somewhere right in here about where I want it to be to make a straight line all the way across. We are back at fighting with fender location and I feel like I'm getting it dialed in. I made a mark here with a plumb bob that goes over the middle of the tire or close enough to it that I'm plenty comfortable with it. So that's the middle of the wheel arch on the travel all. And then I made a mark on the wheel arch of the Dakota by attaching a bar from the bottom of the flare to the bottom of the flare across there and then using a square to go up to the middle. What I discovered is that I don't actually want the middle of the tire or the middle of the Dakota wheel arch exactly over the middle of the tire. Because these two are offset from each other, they're not flat and level, when I put the exact middle over the middle of the tire, it makes this look really close and this look really far away. Even though as you go up to level they would be equal, visually it just did not work. Additionally, I was worried that if I go any bigger on tires at all, that that would put me too close on the back to really have enough space for a bigger tire. And I do want these are about 31 and a half. They're 265, 70, 17s. And I may want to go up to 33s. So I'm trying to make enough space that I can do that, I think. The reality is I probably won't know until I uh, buy some 33s or borrow some or something. But still. So I ended up just moving it back till it looked good, till I liked where it was. And then I actually made a cut here that you just saw and tapped this out so it's a flat line instead of having a little bit of curve down to it. That just widens this back out visually. Both of these are now about two and a half inches. That's the best I'm going to get unless I actually split and widen the fender flare, which I don't want to do. So I think we're going to go with that. I think that maybe needs to go up. There might be some vertical that I want to add to it. I might put it an inch higher, I'm not sure. But left to right, that's where that's going to live. I'm pretty sure that's where I want it. But it might go up an inch. Right now, I think it's the same height as the rear. Although maybe it's just a touch higher. But anyway, it's not a science, it's an art. So I'm just going to look at it until I like it. And that's where it's going to live. So while it's fresh in my mind and I know all the measurements, I'm just going to go ahead and make the marks on this other fender flare so that it's all marked up and I know where it needs to go for install. So I randomly have a 33 inch tire. I think it's a spare tire from a Suburban that a buddy gave me. So I bolted it on. We're gonna test and see if it clears everything. Well, sweet. That's quite the sticker. <laughs> the 33s actually work just fine, even though it gets, you know, two, two and a half fingers close here. About that up here. I don't know, maybe it's the uh, KPI, the kingpin inclination that does it, but as this tire was rotating, even as the back was coming in here, the entire tire was shifting forward slightly. So it was still pulling farther away from the fender. 
So that may even mean I can run some heavier offset because really, you know, I could handle probably three inches of offset from where it's at and still be tucked under this main fender lip here. So I may be able to run some good offset on this as well as I put it all together and still not run into the fenders at all. Awesome. We've done a bit more cutting, trimmed off these corners here. Maybe I'll come back and retrim this because honestly it looks a bit goofy. I don't know, it doesn't really matter. I've also gone and cut some extra Tahoe fender. So we've got a piece with the right basic shape for that. And one with the shape for that. And both of these are cut from the fender following the direction they'll be used. So the curves in them are already pretty much in the right place for everything to work out well. So I've started grinding where the panels are going to meet. I knew there was Bondo down here, but good night. That's got to be like a quarter of an inch deep. I was just sort of gouging at it with the grinder. But on the back side here, I mean, it doesn't even look crazy bad. It's hard to see it back there, but I think I'm just going to have to take it off and just beat the crap out of this section from the back side and then try and kind of hand planish everything back smooth again. So, you know, good times and whatnot. But I'm gonna get behind this thing with a hammer and see what's going on. Right there is that big old dent. I mean, yeah, it's a pretty decent dent, but Man, they loaded it with a lot of Bondo. And then there's four holes filled with Bondo right here, which are actually where the trim mounts. So there's no reason for those to be filled. There's two holes here, and there were two more here. I don't know what was mounted there, but there's the same thing on the other side. And then right here, these are the holes where the badge mounted, I'm pretty sure. So I'm going to have to clean those out. I'll clean these out and actually weld them shut. And then I'll clean these out because I want to be able to use that space. Then I've got to weld up some holes here and here. Here's the three patches we've been working on. First round of welding, grinding is done. Touch up here, touch up along this corner here. And I actually have to do a bunch of welding up in here. I actually cracked the weld a whole bunch. I did some grinding, ground this farther than I really should have before I tried flattening it a little bit. So I've done a little bit of hammer and a little bit of dolly work. Use the uh, slapper some. Try and pull everything into shape. And overall, I think we're in a fairly good place. You can see there's not a ton of gap there at all. 
And it looks pretty much like that across that whole patch. So I've got to weld up that hole still, which I had left on purpose while I finished this up. So I'm going to weld this from the back and then do some touch-up welds. I also welded up a couple of holes here and here, but that one needs to be re-welded. I knocked some weld out of it that just hadn't really bit into the fender. It only bit into the weld pool. Rewelding is all done. Filled that hole. This didn't have a good transition, so I actually rewelded that whole thing. I've also done a little bit of hammering from behind where I rewelded, hoping that will help the transitions go a little bit more smoothly. But I'm going to try grinding this down, get a cleaner transition, and then, oh, I also still have to re-weld the back side along here. I did not do that. Alright, so we've got this all looking pretty good now. Pretty happy with it overall. What you didn't see was the fact that it's taken me like four or five tries to get here. I would try to hammer something a little bit into shape and crack a weld, or I would be trying to smooth something out, and I would apparently have overground, which I did up here, so I had to refill a big chunk right there. So yeah, it's been a bit of a mess, but it's good enough for now. It will take a bit of filler to make it all perfect. I just am not good enough to make it super pretty without that. But that'll be all right. It's not huge dents, not giant craters. So it should just be a skim that will just, you know, fill that valley and then fluff everything out real nice. But all the rust is gone. We've got a little bit more dolly work I want to do along here where it was really dented. And I still have to replace this corner. Rusted chunk cut out. I ground what I could and then sprayed in just a bit of rust converter. And that there is our fancy patch panel. Alright, so that's a re <coughs> <coughs> pardon, puberty, jeez. <laughs> that's a repair I'm actually really happy with. I feel like I ended up with a very straight line up it. It's got the recurve. So that one turned out really well. Those have been really difficult for me. I've been kind of unhappy with the overall quality. They're okay. They're not as good as I wanted, but that at least made me feel pretty inside. <laughs> I think that's all the official rust repair. All the welding we do on this thing from here on out is going to be getting that thing into the right place. And to do that, I think I actually want to hang that fender back on the body. Got those reinforcement brackets welded back in. Cleaned up a little bit, but I'm not worried too much about it. Not going to try very hard. Same right there. And this was all welded back in along this corner. And that, we've tried to clean up a little bit more nicely. But all those reinforcements are back in place. So we're ready to hit those with just a bit of rust protection. And then we'll rehang the fender and move on to actually rebuilding that whole center area. These body lines are absolutely miserable. And I kind of jacked up the actual like feature line right here unthinkingly but such it is fender is rehung got all the various metal bits ground back in some fashion so now it's just I think get these on tack them to the fender itself 
Then once these are on, come back and attach this. And just cut and butt the whole dang thing together. Due to some technical difficulties with my camera, this is a little bit farther on than where you last saw it. I got that piece all added in. I need to, in that corner, build something, and around the front here, build a little something to kind of finish it off so it all looks nice and finished. And this bottom area never really got finished, and that will wait until I rehang everything but despite all of that all these pieces are now in place for the next steps which I'll need to flip the whole fender over and just do some hammer and dolly work along these lines to try and smooth them out a little bit get them all pulled in the right direction before I start welding and then after welding, I'm sure I will have to do more of it. So I've made a few passes on this so far, starting to get it all tacked together. You can see we've got a lot of linear feet of welding to go here. But one of the things that, that does mean is as I stitch my way along, by the time I finish working through the whole panel, <clears throat> the other side is cold to the touch again and I can just go straight back to welding just making the cycles so that is all we're doing some of the times we're blowing holes in it and I'm just kind of skipping over those for now and I'll go back and deal with them specifically in the future but for now we're just working our way around the whole panel I finished up the first major round of welding, got that all taken care of, but now we have to find out if the shape is really what I want. I'm afraid when I set it on this I may have introduced a little bit of twist, and then by welding that I may have made it permanent. It feels like I know I've got a good divot right here that along that body line I'm going to have to hammer out. It also feels like here to here is a nice flat plane, but here this sticks out a bunch. But that corner's dipped in. This feels a bit flat compared to here and here. So there's lots of issues with this. And I think that's just the fact of using metal from a bunch of different stuff and trying to free float piece this together. I think I'm just going way beyond what I know how to do. So it's getting a little funky. Let's throw this thing back on the, tra on the travel all though. and take a look at the real impact of what we've done. So this ridge definitely has a divot in it. We'll have to kind of hammer back out. Oh, I missed a spot. Oh, there's another one. Dang it. We'll have to hammer that out. This does have a bit too much curve to it. So the transition between these panels right here, all through here, isn't very nice looking. But I'm hoping maybe if I hammer on this, I can sort of flatten this edge out a fair amount. Because that's really what it needs. It needs to be flattened. So we'll see if we can get that. Because hopefully just, you know, twisting this down and hammering that out will just sort of push all of this area down some. Otherwise, I may end up having to cut this and cut this and flatten it and then go from there. Ever since I bought this thing, it has had this amazing bead of sealant here, whose purpose I don't even actually understand. But that sealant, I think, is keeping the back of the fender 
from pushing in as flat as I would like. So if I remove that, maybe I can kick the fender a bit and flatten this back edge out. But also, this edge of the door, I don't know if you can really tell or not, but it's rolled in like it's been catching on the fender. So I also need to try and bring this side of the door out and clean all that up. In fact, this rust here is actually following the curve of that damage in the door. So we need to get all that scraped out and then maybe get a board back in behind there and see if we can do a little hammer flattening to the front edge of this door here. Looking at this body line here, I still have a low spot along here where the weld gets closest to the body line. So I'll need to push that back out. But for now, I'm just gonna keep hammering and tweaking, trying to bring that shape back a little bit at a time till I like what I'm seeing. That's a lot of really good progress on that fender. I think I'm going to back this thing out and we'll take a look at it outside, really get a look at how it's all coming together. There it is. I have to keep checking to make sure I'm going in the right direction, but in the end, I think I'm quite happy with that. I've made significant changes to the body lines on this vehicle, but I think they work. Maybe you guys can tell me in the comments that I'm wrong. But overall, I think what I've done works. I think it still looks good. Actually, I think it looks better than it did stock in a lot of ways. Just because I hated the way the angles that were back here and up here were working. So I am much happier with how that's looking. I've had this picture in my head for a long time. And it's really, really cool to see it in real life. When it comes to like major body modification, this is the most significant thing I've ever done. I've never attempted something quite as ridiculous as this. These are a lot of changes to the bottom line of the vehicle anyway. And it's really nice to see what I'd visualized in my head actually play out and show up as something that when I'm done still looks good. So this wheel arch ended up about an inch higher than this wheel arch. I added three to five inches back there at that corner going up to the factory corner. I've added something like three inches to this corner going up to well maybe four inches to this corner going up to about two inches still at that front corner when it wraps around I'll just have to finish it on its way up the white hard corner here and the black around it really does kind of throw off the look it's hard to really tell what's going on there but I think once I get that ground back and in one color it'll really look nice even though this area is bigger than this area. So it is a bit nose heavy up here in the corner especially. Which is unfortunate but it's just a cause of the um, wheelbase I'm working with. I think if the wheel were farther forward it wouldn't look quite so heavy up on that nose just sticking out. But it could also be that this point pointing at that nose is really drawing the eye to it. So it could be that that's totally throwing me off. Hold on a minute, we're gonna try something. I ran some masking tape over the area just to try and hide that corner a little bit visually. That nose is still quite prominent. But, honestly, once I put the bumper on, the bumper will stick out farther up here 
than the nose does, I think that will also help. So, yeah, unfortunately, moving this wheel back and down does make that nose look quite high. But the rear is also quite long and uh, flat slabs of sheet metal, so at least they match in that way. Nevertheless, you know what? I'm really happy with how it's all coming together. Once that bumper's on, maybe it'll fix a lot of that issue, and I can hope that's the case, but if not, I'm just going to deal with it. It's not perfect, but it's pretty damn good, and I'm pretty comfortable with that. All right, I got to get this thing back in the shop so I can get back to work. There is the completed fender. Every piece that needs to be welded to it is finally welded to it. The grinding is done. <clears throat> so like everything else, it just needs some body work. It's really round right here compared to the flat of the body. So, you know, maybe a little bit of flattening there. Lots of bolting in place. But that is where it's going to live. We've got... The center frame hung so that it's spaced correctly. So all of that is right where it's going to be. That was an insane amount of work. I don't actually know how many hours I have into this fender. But it's got to be at least 10, probably more. So there's a lot of work in this fender. <clears throat> But overall, I'm happy with how it came out. <coughs> Down here looks a bit funny with that until you realize that they're actually the same shape if that goes in. So when I attach these to the body, I just have to make sure I pull it in and then weld everything up to attach it. With that one done, it's time to dig into that one. I tell you though, all this work on these fenders has burned me out a little bit.